kick off everything. Basically, majority of what I do comes from this beautiful 2017 Gibson Les Paul Standard. Uh, it is my baby. Uh, burst bucker pickups. Um, lovely feeling neck. I don't really know too much about it. It's got the modern weight relief on it, so it's not quite as much of a killer um, when it's on your shoulder for, you know, um, well, we're, we're, we're recording about an hour and a half, two hours at a time um, because we're recording all of this live. Um, so it's not as much of a killer on my back, but it is still pretty pretty heavy um, regardless of the fact that they're making it lighter. Um, then I go into my EVH 5150, um, which I've had for a few years now. Um, I believe these, these were made by PV. Um, and then Fender took it over and, and collaborated with Eddie Van Halen to make this absolute beast um, of an amp. Um, yeah, it's done me well the past few years that I've been using it. Uh, it sounds great, plays great. Um, I've never really had any problems with it, so yeah, it's been great. Um, and so I'll give you a wee, uh, let's switch it on. So. Just going straight in, no messing. Um, then when we come to my pedal board, I'm quite quite minimalist. I don't really do much with it. I've got uh, a TS9 tube screamer here by made by Ibanez, and I also have my vintage Big Muff, which um, is so vintage it doesn't even have a nine volt input. Um, so it means I've got to run it on batteries, which is a uh, great fun. But uh, yeah, so. The um, whole idea behind getting the sound for, for this album for me was to make my album uh, uh, my album tone as thick and as dirty as possible. So getting the big muff involved was imperative to that because it makes it sound like this. <laughs> Just makes it really really noisy really really thick sounds amazing um, the other guitar I've been using um, which is the studios guitar is uh, let me put my, my, my Les Paul down um, is this lovely uh, Gretsch which is a uh, I think it's from the 80s I think and it's a uh, uh, Malcolm Young signature um, so it's absolutely beautiful, lovely, lovely guitar, um, which has been really nice of Chris to let me use it. Um, Chris who owns uh, this studio. So I'll give you a wee try out how that sounds. Um, just a slightly different tone um, to the, the Les Paul, just gives it that wee extra something different if we're ever needing a guitar maybe up the middle or... Um, it sounds really great clean, this guitar. <laughs> But that now brings me to the most important TU3 by Boss. The TU3? It's TU3, isn't it? Yeah. TU3. This makes everything sound good. Uh, dead easy to use. I'm going to make sure that this guitar is in tune. Try that again. <laughs> Great, 
Sounds great, clean. And uh, then also if you're putting it onto the Dirty Channel. And uh, maybe if you want to try and what I've been doing is rolling the tone back on it. Uh, just gonna... tones lots of different stuff going on um lots of lovely stuff for me to mess around with and have fun with um i'm a bit of a i love trying loads of new gear and loads of new um stuff so it's always fun um when you get to go into the studio and someone goes right what are we going to do to come up with this tone um, i always find that really fun um, we were using this this wham dominator um, we were using that for the clean tone for a song called um, Shell at Me and uh, it sounds, sounds really cool. In fact, I'll see if I can plug into it. Um, just to give you a wee oh. Put this on standby. To get the tone for Shell of Me, um, we tried the Fender Twin. We tried the clean tone on my EVH, which does sound good, um, but this just had the right level of, you know, brightness and, and uh, everything really. Uh, I think it needs a wee minute to... Come on! Here we go, here we go. Yeah, so this 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 uh, amp sound is really cool, which is really broad sound. between this, you know, what is essentially made for someone who is playing and then this totally weird amp that I'd never ever ever even heard of before, never mind used before a couple of days ago, um, has made a really really great sound um, for uh, one of probably the most important songs on our album, um, so we're really excited about that. Uh, and the only other guitar that I haven't showed you is my Flying V, which I will show you right now. I actually got it because um, I needed a guitar with a longer scale length. Um, just because the Les Paul's a wee bit just too short for for some things that we were trying to achieve. Um, and this just has a wee bit longer and I've got heavier strings on it. I've actually got um, 12, 12 gauge strings on this, so it is really, really, really heavy sounding. Sounds great. Um, it's, it's got a wee funny quirk to it. Um, even if I turn the volume off on my bridge pickup, there's still sound that comes through it. I don't know why. Woo! Uh, and I 
and I get and the same on the the neck pick up. If I've got the neck pick up up, but I take the volume off of it, I still get noise. I don't know why. Any guitar geeks out there that can tell me why, I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, it's very very temperamental. But I quite like the fact that it's temperamental because it means I have to fight it. Um, to you know, get it how I want it, and I don't know why, but I seem to like that struggle. Um, and it looks quite cool, you know, natural wood color, whatever else, and it feels good to play. Wait, I've got volume down on both, and you can still hear it a wee bit. Don't know why, don't know why. Um, yeah, so that's all of my guitars. Um, we because we've been recording live, um, and we've been tracking. The vocals uh, live as well, um, you know, for, gu for guides and stuff like that, just to keep everyone right. We've been using this SM7, which is a really cool mic. Um, I quite like using it. I don't really know enough about it, to be honest. Um, you know, our producer Toby and uh, engineer Chris, they brought it out and put it in front of me and I sing into it and it sounds really nice. Um, it seems to suit my voice a wee bit. I don't know if we're going to use it when we go back to record the vocals again, but it does sound cool. Um, I will show you how it sounds, but <laughs> it's all through there. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for all my stuff. Um, oh, always have a set of strings with you uh, when you're in the studio, um, because when you're actually in the live room, because you never know when you're gonna break a set. Although in saying that, I've never broke a set of Paradigms by Ernie Ball, 10 to 52. Um, that's what I use if you want to know. Um, but yeah, that that's, seems to work for me with the, the drop D stuff. And I've always got screwdrivers because, um, especially with what we're doing right now, um, where you know, you're know you performing live and you're trying to capture that live sound, you don't play your guitar like uh, you play it. Absolutely scalping it, and scalping is Scottish for hitting it really hard. Um, so hitting my Gibson very very hard means that the intonation goes out quite a lot so <laughs> I need to delve into that box quite a lot to fix the intonation every every couple of songs just to make sure everything's fine um, and I think that's everything really uh, always have an extra speaker cable always have extra cables for everything because things always go wrong and uh, that's it thank you bye